we often get recruiters reach out to us asking us how to set up a business. They're oftentimes working in a recruitment agency and they're thinking that they want to move and set up on their own, start their own recruitment company, start as a freelancer, whatever it is. Um, and we put together a blog on the 15 steps that we think you need to go through to in order to set up your own company so that you're ready to start trading and you're ready to start working with clients. Now, I'll attach a link to the blog in the comments so that you can read through it in its entirety. Hopefully, you find it useful. But in this video today, what I'm going to do is rattle through the 15 steps and I'll probably do separate videos to go into detail on each step. But for today's video, I'm just going to get a quick overview of the 15 things we think you need to do and attach a link to the blog in the comments so that you can have a read through it as well. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is determine your business structure, whether that be a sole trader or a limited liability company. And you can look into them in detail, see what the different options are. But I would think, say the majority of the time for freelancers that we engage with on the gig hire platform, everybody seems to go for a limited liability company. So the second thing that you're going to want to do is pick your company name. Now, oftentimes people just use maybe their surname with recruitment. A lot of people will advise you that you want to make it obvious in your name what it is that you do. So for us, we're called Gig Hire. Doesn't isn't necessarily super obvious what we do. So you might want to make it a little bit more obvious than that. Or you might want to get creative and go for something that you think sounds a little bit different because often if it's just say, if I called my company Pick and Recruitment, that can become quite monotonous, quite quite boring, lacks inspiration. So maybe you'd want to pick something that helps you to stand out from the crowd a little bit. Once you've got an idea for a company name, you want to go to like the governing body, like company's house to check that the A, the name's available and B, that it doesn't infringe on any copyrights or trademark that's already out there. So if you just go to company's house, you start to type in the name that you have in mind, the system will tell you if that's something that's available and something that you can use. So the third thing you're going to want to do is register your company. Now, we used a business called Your Company Formations. Again, we attach links to that in the blog. So if you want to check this company out in more detail, go and have a look at the blog. But in short, what companies like this help you do is for a small fee, they take care of all of the admin for you in terms of setting up your business so that you know you've got all the you've registered in all the right places and you've got all the right paperwork. And like I say, for a you can do this by yourself. It is a little bit more complicated. So I would always recommend if you have the money to be able to pay a business like this for a small fee, it's well worth doing just for speed and ease. So the fourth thing that you're going to want to do, especially if you're setting up a limited liability company, is appoint directors. Now, if you're setting up on your own, this is fairly simple. You can appoint yourself as a director. But if you're setting up with a business partner or there's other people involved, you'll have to talk about who's going to take what roles and responsibilities and then decide if you're both going to be directors or say one of you is going to be a director. So the fifth thing that you're going to want to do is look at the company's articles of association. Now, the articles basically outline the rules and the regulations of the company. If you're setting up a company in the UK, Companies House already have guidelines available for you to use. You can set up your own or you can lean upon the ones that are available in Companies House. I'll be honest, if you're setting up a business in other countries, US, elsewhere, I'm not sure if this is something that's required. It's definitely worth having a quick Google to see if you need articles of association, because I'm sure that there'll be uh, templates and there'll be guidance on how you get hold of those in whatever country it is that you are setting up your business. So the sixth thing that you're going to want to look at is like potential licenses and certifications that you may need. For a lot of countries, I don't think you need a license to recruit. In some countries, you do. I'm going to say Switzerland is one that does require a license. So for a lot of people in a lot of places, you won't need to. But this is just something that you might want to have a quick check just to make sure that it's not something that you're, you're required to have. The seventh thing is to register for taxes. So in most countries where you'll be operating in business, you will be required to pay taxes. Um, in the UK, you don't have to register for tax if your annual income is under 85000 pounds a year. So if you're if you're looking at operating in the UK and for your first year you think that you are going to earn less than 85k, you actually don't have to register to pay VAT, 
but you have to be aware that if you do tip over this threshold it's something you are going to have to register for um, and often if you've got an accountant somebody like that can guide you through this process number eight is to set up a business bank account now there's lots of options for business banking you i could sit here all day and like i say i might do a longer video talking about business bank accounts and what's available the two that are front runners for me are the online banks monzo and starlin bank i think they are both very accessible and i think the service that they offer for me it's better than the high street i find it for ease of use i find it better than working with a high street bank um, but again have a look around in the blog that i keep referencing we actually attach to an article that provides you with a comparison between some banks so if you want to go and have a little read of that again check out the blog there's a link there that gives you some comparisons to show you which banks offer business banking and how those different accounts compare number nine is to find an accountant now this one for me is a biggie because personally i'm rubbish with numbers i'm rubbish at accounting so i've always needed somebody to make sure that gig is doing everything that it's required to do from an accounting perspective to make sure that my tax returns are on time and that i'm paying all the right taxes and i'm staying in line so i'd highly recommend finding an accountant um, one option you have for finding an accountant is upwork you could take a look at Upwork to see if you can find somebody there. I, I will say, like, do it at your own discretion. Make sure you look into the person because it's really important that they're legit and that they're going to be able to support you in the right way. I think for me, the best way to find an accountant is word of mouth. So if you know somebody that's running their own business, if you've got contacts in the industries that you're working in, maybe just ask around and, and see who they use as their accountant. Uh, because if you get an accountant through recommendation, I would say that's always going to be the best way to go. Number 10 is understanding employment regulations. Now, if you're going to be recruiting in the UK or other countries around the world, there's going to be employment regulations like anti-discrimination laws and things like that that you're going to need to be aware of. So it's definitely something that you want to have a quick read into. Again, I'll probably cover it in more detail in another video because um, it's a lot to dive into but it's definitely one just to keep front of mind that you want to have a quick look to see what the employment regulations are so when we get to number 11 we've now kind of covered off all of the admin -y things in terms of setting up a business and we've got number 11 as start building a candidate database if you're somebody that is going to be stepping into recruitment or you're coming from a recruitment background you're going to know that a good candidate network, a good candidate database is your bread and butter. So you can start building that kind of in instantly really, whilst you at the same time as you're running through the setup of a company, so that when your company is set up and ready to go, you've already got candidates that you're networking with that you might then be able to start approaching clients with. Number 12 is setting up your processes and your systems. Now, this is kind of a mistake that I made when I first started in business is that I wanted to keep costs low. So I didn't pay for any software and I was not really managing my database. I might have had a few Excel spreadsheets with bits and pieces on. But to be totally honest, it was a little bit of a mess. And it seems like a good idea at the time. But you end up losing out on opportunity because you forget about people you've spoken with. You, you forget about you know clients that you've been in contact with. You forget about the candidates you've interviewed and spoken to, and you quickly realize that actually you end up losing more than you gain. Um, obviously, this is going to be a little bit of self-promotion, but this is exactly why we're building a free ATS and database for freelance recruiters. If you are somebody that does want to keep costs low, we've got a completely free database that you can make use of to store your candidates, your client contacts, keep on top of everything. We do have... Uh, subscription models that you can pay for but if you want to use our free system you can use it forever without um, without a trial period and without the need to give us any credit card details make use of it it is well worth whether it's the gig hire platform or the zoho recruit something it's well worth having a database in place because i think a big trap people can fall into is thinking i'm going to save money by not paying for something but if you don't have that structure and that process in place in the long run you're just going to miss an opportunity so take a look at options like i say we have a free version that you can use check out our youtube channel check out all the blogs we've written about the features that are available it might be something to get you started just so that you can keep on top of things without breaking the bank
13, number 13 is marketing your services. Now, when you are working in recruitment, I think recruitment's a little bit still stuck in its ways. I think it's moving in the right direction now, but I feel like recruitment is a little bit stuck in the sense that it's still very salesy, very outbound. Uh, people aren't, like recruiters don't often create content. They're not often creating videos, trying to be creative with how they can add value through content. It is very outreach focused and a big part of it will be outreach for you to start with. You'll have to go for cold emails, cold calls, cold outreach on LinkedIn. All of that stuff is going to be pivotal for you starting. But I would also say to you, like, think about how look into marketing, look into understanding how to write copy and content and think about how you might be able to start adding value through content because it is a long term play. But if you are consistent with it over years and years and years, hopefully in the future, you'll find yourself with more inbound leads than having to do the outbound cold calls, which nobody really likes to do. Number 14 ties into marketing, really, and it's buying a website. Maybe you should buy the website first before you start marketing. But yeah, number 14 is to buy a website. There's loads of places out there that you can buy a website domain for fairly cheap. Um, 123reg springs to mind, GoDaddy, Wix, places like that are places where you can go and check out website domains and make a purchase. Now, if I jump back to the start of the video where we talk about thinking about a company name, that's probably actually a good time to start thinking about a, a buying a website domain as well. Because if you've got an idea in your head for what you want to call the company, but you can't buy that website domain, that might be a reason for you to change tack and think, actually, we're going to change the name um, to something that I can buy. So maybe move this further up the pecking order and start looking for a website domain. Um, find something that is affordable, find something that's going to fit your brand. And like I say, you can pay for it fairly easily, get ownership of that by using any one of the tools that I mentioned. And again, they're all featured in the blog, so you can read those, find the links to those there. And the last one, arguably one of the most important ones, is to create contracts and legal agreements. If you're going to start working with clients, you're going to want to make sure that you've got the right contracts, the right legals in place to be able to protect you. Um, what you don't want to do as a, as a small business or a freelancer is find yourself in a position where you put a load of time and effort into work, working for a client, you've delivered a service, and then you don't get paid for that service because, um, because you haven't had the right contracts in place. Now, similar to finding an accountant, you can find lawyers on websites like Upwork. Again, I would err on the side of caution with it a little bit because you want to, again, you want to make sure that this person is legit and they have the right credentials to be able to support you. So like with the accountant, maybe ask around and ask people that you know in industry or maybe people that have set up recruitment contracts before, how they went about it, how they did it, get, get connected to the people that they've worked with because that way you give yourself the best chance of protecting protecting the business and making sure that you're paid for the work that you do so they're the 15 steps to opening a recruitment company as i've said multiple times in this video i will add a link in the comments to the blog should you want to read it i'll probably do follow-up videos where maybe i talk about these topics in a little bit more detail because i have tried to even though this video is probably going to be long i have tried to skim through them and just give you a bit of an overview if you are interested in checking out the gig hire free recruitment platform take a look at some of the other videos on our youtube channel we try to upload videos that show you all the features you can use we're trying to implement ai and other bits and pieces into the platform now so it's kind of getting exciting with what we can offer you like i say we do have subscription models that you can pay for or if you're just interested in using the free forever ats you can make use of that as well and like i say there's zero restrictions on how long you can use it or how much how much data you can store in there as well